and set up here. All right. I apologize for the delay. But let's get going here. Let's see. What's up, Sapphire? Yay, somebody. Somebody's here. <laughs> How's it going? What's up, Raphael? Welcome, welcome. How you guys doing? I'm on a Wednesday, so maybe we'll get a mixed crowd tonight. What's up, Nico? How's it going? Joner? Thanks for joining me tonight. Um... I figured I would do something not based on a concept tonight. Is that crazy? And I'll only be, there's not very many people here, but I'm, I'm only going to be streaming for two hours tonight. I mean, it's a super busy week for me. I'm just trying to get some stuff done, but I wanted to s squeeze in a stream this week. So we're going to do it on a Wednesday for two hours. <laughs> I've made you a convert. Hey, what's up, Kyle? How's it going, man? I've converted you to to build your models using primitives. That's great. It's good to hear. Uh, <clears throat> it's such a great way to work because it forces you to like look at the big picture, you know, to look at the big everything without, you know, it kind of keeps you out of the details too soon, which is great. So. I have to think about this. Oh, super late. Oh, sorry, Mortar. What's up, Blands? Welcome, welcome. Um, so, yeah, we're starting to get people. Here, let me let me go post this over on over on the Facebooks. Get some more peeps in here. Uh. Join me. Okay. Okay. I just posted to my to my student page over there. All right, let's uh, let's get going. Good night, mortar. Thanks for dropping by. What's up, Red? I'm just doing uh, I'm just doing the stream today, just for this week. I'll go back to Tuesday next week, and I'm going to be shortening the streams a little bit to make them a little more dense and compact and not so. Because uh, I think during that <laughs> during that last hour, I kind of get a little a little kooky. It can be fun, but I get I don't know. I guess I'm going getting old. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so what I was thinking about is um, I was thinking about building a dragon, but a stylized cartoony dragon. When when I was in high school and junior high, I would draw dragons all the time. And I I really haven't drawn them for quite a while. I I did a dragon in ZBrush. I think it was I think it was ZBrush two or three something like that anyway the model was so dense so high in polygon count that it uh you can hear my kids in the background they're still awake um they are it was so high in density i had to break it up into two pieces i wonder if gosh i wonder if i have that somewhere i'm sure i do um i'll have to show it to you guys sometime but it's I did all the scales and the the wing is it was nuts it was crazy so uh, I thought hey Waltron what's going on <laughs> yay nope you guys didn't miss it I I missed my session so what's up Sumerian <laughs> uh, no fighting over there no jealousy 
Um, anyway, I, I'm opening up my registration for, I'm giving a webinar next week. And it's, uh, it's going to be some training, some free training, and it's going to be, I'm opening up my course again. So I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for it for a long time. Sorry, sorry it took me so long, but I'm actually going to uh, launch my course. And I'm going to put this, I'm going to put this webinar registration in the, in the chat really quick. I'm not going off a concept. I'm going off of my, the, the dragons that I used to draw in high school. <laughs> so I used to live in the basement of my parents' house. It was an unfinished basement and they had cement walls, like concrete walls. And I would, um, sorry, I don't know where that S came from, but, um, I would, uh, take pastel chalk and I would draw on those on those concrete walls in my room, just gigantic murals, and I would draw dragons and stuff. So that was, I don't know, I'm a geek that way. I was into the dragon thing. So hey, what's up everybody? Welcome, welcome, you haven't missed anything. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Yep, that's uh, for, the re for the webinar next week. If you guys wanna join me, it's free. Okay, so, I'm going to block it out with primitives. I have a, a decent idea of how it's how I want it to look. Um, and thank you very very much for signing up for the for the webinar. I, you're going to kind of be my guinea pigs to test my workflow to see if you guys get. Let me know if you get emails. You should get one from GoToWebinar and one from me thanking you for registering. So if you could just tell me if you. Uh, yeah. The, is the webinar my course? The webinar is not my course, but it's an intro. It's uh, it's kind of a little pitch, but I'm, I'm doing some training and at the end I'll do a little pitch and tell you all about it and then I'm going to open it up for questions and answers so you can you can know all about it. So, okay, so you're not staring at the sphere all night. Let's get let's get rocking. Um, you'll if you sign up for that webinar, you'll get a bunch of emails letting you know. I'll be reminding you when it's coming. So that's what my workflow is all about. So it's, but the webinar itself actually happens next Wednesday. So next, not, not today, but next Wednesday. So, okay. Um, it's kind of weird, but I think I want to start out with the eyeballs. And this is going to be the, the skull, but I want to block out the eyes. I'm going to do it a little differently than I usually do. Nice, Blance. Blance, it's good to see you posting on Facebook. I, I believe that's you. Tell me if it's not. Let's see. So I have to really envision this. Okay, sweet. Thanks, guys. Thanks for t letting me know. It's a, it's a crazy, crazy system I have set up. To to I should show you guys later. I'll show you the system. It's like leads you through depending on when you sign up. It'll send you different emails. It's it's this. It reminds me of kind of a coin separator. You know, <laughs> like it separates the coins as you're going through. It's just nuts. Anyway, I had no idea this stuff existed until I started having to do marketing. Okay, let's get going. Um, I'm going to split this off because I don't want to touch the eyeballs. I usually leave the eyeballs on a separate subtool. Letting me down. <laughs> what are you talking about letting me down? I just want to make sure that's you posting that stuff and not some, some impersonator blands, some chump. Okay, I think this is going to be funny for a little while. <laughs> But I need to put, I need to just block out the, the snout here. It's going to look weird. Awesome. Thank you guys for signing up. It's my first one. So you'll have to forgive me if I'm a little rusty at it. But, you know you guys have made me comfortable streaming so I hope I hope I do okay it'll be fun 
It's for an hour. It's only an hour. <laughs> you do hold me to high standards. You know, that that's a thing, dude. It's it is a thing. Like wasting people's time is not what I want to do. So Hopefully I won't waste your time like I do in these streams. <laughs> uh. So <laughs> I'm I'm kind of a I'm kind of a snooty dragon guy. Like I have a very particular style of dragon that I'm a, I'm a fan of. That's why I drew them so much over and over and over again. And um, if I, I really like Chinese dragons, but the, like the English versions are my favorite and a specific one with a specific snout and a certain kind of a certain kind of teeth. And it's not a dragon that looks like a bird like this. so far um, but it is very very specific so we'll see if I can pull it off in 3d come on hide that there we go I might not even use that sphere I might just continue so that's another thing you guys that I've been experimenting with I don't know how many of you guys saw, but um, when I, at the end of one of the streams a while back, gosh, I got an itch, sorry. <laughs> um, at the end of one of my streams, I did a little experiment with a mouth, like a mouth cavity, where I took a sphere and I pushed in the geometry and then I Z remeshed it and the Z remesher made a nice loop around the mouth just naturally because it was trying to re, uh, Z remesh that. Yeah, condor nose, this is a condor dragon. Um, and, uh, the, sorry, I was reading your comments and just sidetracked. <laughs> what was I saying? Holy cow. I just, I just totally forget. <laughs> I just got sidetracked. I, oh my gosh. What was I talking about? Tell me what I was talking about, you guys. Oh, the experimenting with Ziri Mesher. So, okay. A lot of people will use Dynamesh to experiment with. And that's great, that's super great. Especially with little details that you're pulling out and re-Dynameshing, pulling them out, re-Dynameshing. Um, I kind of, I'm kind of using Z Remesher for that experimentation lately because it gives you that nice low resolution mesh underneath. So like I'm, I'm starting to pull the so this is the back of the head and the horns will come out here. I'll show you. And I want to Z remesh it as I go so it'll give me enough geometry as I go and wrap around it hopefully and uh, and work it, work it out. So that, yeah, that, that mouth bag, that gave me a, it was so easy. I mean, you can go back and watch it. I don't, I think it's episode, at the very end of like episode seven or eight of the Pirate Girl. And I kind of surprised myself with it. And I'm like, ooh, that was easy. I'm going to have to do that more. <laughs> so just little experimentations. Yes. OK, I'm going to delete this sphere here. And then let's see we mesh this. Do, do, do. Super low. And also, um, I've been doing the thing that Joseph Drust does, which is hit this half um, on the Z remesher and hit it again. Because what that'll do is it'll take your density and cut it by half. And that will get, yep, this is, well, it's, go it's, gonna, it's gonna be a dragon, trust me. <laughs> right now, I don't know, it's like a weird bird thing. So just, just hang out, hang out. It'll be cool, I hope. Okay. 
let's build this up. But if you hit half, it, it ends up with a little bit better, uh, better, what, do you, what am I trying to say? It'll, it'll just Z remesh it better, like better calculation around the forms. If you Z remesh it at a higher resolution and then take that new mesh and half it with this little half button right here and do it again, it does pretty good. Yeah, it totally cleans the resolution up. Go in, in Joseph we dressed. <laughs> okay. I want to push these eyes in. Did you guys, uh, <laughs> yeah, I love the crazy comments you guys do. I love it. In Drust We Trust. Hey, Ashton, how's it going, man? How is it going? I'm glad you guys are finding me on this off night. Sorry about that. I'm doing great, thanks. I'm doing great because I just got my webinar set up my webinar registration and that was a pain in the butt to get set up and I found a person to help me get it set up and so I just I mean I just barely finished it right before the stream like literally okay I'm, I'm just kind of pinching the 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 mesh or like through the eye the way I want the eye to uh, kind of sit in there the eye the eye shape see how this like nicely starts to create that almond looking shape then I'll, I'll work um Ashen I don't I don't know yet I th I'm gonna I'm gonna see how I'm only gonna go two hours tonight because I've been cranking all day long so I'm gonna go two hours and we'll see how much I can get done in two hours. So that is where we're at. And I always loved to, I always loved to put these like cavities where the horns would come out. That's a bird, it's a bird, it's a bird. Okay, let's, let's try to Z remesh this again. The real question is, how are you guys doing? You guys doing good? There we go. See that? It's so cool. So, I mean, it's not perfect, but it starts to kind of help me out, you know? And then I can come build it up and Z remesh it again. I was just telling these guys earlier, for those of you just showing up, is uh, I I used to draw lots of dragons in high school. Oh, catch the train time. Oh, maybe you can catch me. How long's your train ride? <laughs> Fantasy bird. Oh yeah, let me show you this webinar. Okay. Yep. Please register. It's next Wednesday at noon my time which is 11 Pacific. Okay. And I'll be opening my course back up for enrollment at the same time. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting anxiously. Thank you for being so patient with me. I'm anxious to get some more e eager students in there. It'll be fun. All right, this is getting pretty, pretty lumpy here. Sweet, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay. <laughs> you woke up, good morning. 
or afternoon or what's your time what's your time zone <laughs> let's smooth these eyes out there we go I want to make that head a lot narrower it's gonna make the eyeballs poke out but I don't care yeah there we go there we go so I want the horns to kind of come out and they're going to be huge and stick way out the back. Tomorrow afternoon in New Zealand. That's so crazy. So crazy. Hello, New Zealand. Okay. We're going to work those eyes on, I promise. That's this appendage brush also works fantastically for horns. Ooh, make them big and then push them in. Okay. Oh, did I put it backwards? <laughs> You're right. It's backwards. Holy cow. It's backwards. Okay, ignore it. But thank you very good. You guys you guys are kind of my guinea pigs tonight. <laughs> They're wait, I'm I will turn around, I'm sorry. Yes, it's I'm I mean I'm in Utah. The webinar is at noon my time, mountain time. So it'll be eleven AM Pacific and what is that? Two p two PM Eastern. Yeah. I can do math. <laughs> Doing great. Thanks for joining. How is tomorrow looking for for what? I'm going to turn this off and use the transpose tool cuz I still like to use this bend. Yep, math is hard. <laughs> Especially for us for us art types, right? Ooh, okay. Whoa. Turn it around. I what am I sculpting in? Like what what's the program or what am I like what am I trying to attempt to sculpt? I'm trying to sculpt a dragon of my own design. attempting and this program is ZBrush if you guys didn't know it's like those big goat horns <laughs> I, I, I failed algebra <laughs> can't I can't do it okay I'm gonna separate these out group split let's name these horns yep super biggest horns ever <laughs> okay yep this is a stand up desk I'm standing so I can do the the dances I'm going to fill this with white and then use like a gray I'm going to switch this material so I can kind of see the surface a little better ok 
Okay. So I'm going to kind of make a ridge line, but I'll put gums up in there. And I like the dragons with kind of this kind of this beak. It's not really like a bird beak, but it's it has this kind of round end to it. The stream it's it's a it's very very small delay, but yeah, it's it's pretty close to real time. Maybe a couple seconds maybe. I'm not I'm not sure. Make this more round and less square. And Z remesh is your friend. Yeah, kind of like a black rhino. Kind of like that. See, okay, this is what I was talking about, guys. Look at that. Z remesher, it's putting these awesome loops around my stuff. It's it's following kind of that that edge flow. I would almost rather block or uh, experiment with Z remesher than I would with Dynamesh. Just saying, and it kind of keeps you away from the details too, so it's cool. And then down down into here later on I'll there, it, it, he's going to kind of have some crocodile teeth excuse me so uh, some big some small going down here and on this is his lower mouth gets really thin really narrow and he's got a little beard going on and then uh, some little horns going down here and some down the center but I need to get his his ear in there and I'm going to block that out right now. Well, I'm going to put his lower jaw first. I have seen some uh, some D and D dragons. Uh, some that people have made some dragon skulls that you could hang over like your your mantle or something. You know, if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, and I really like some of the designs of those skulls. Whoever did those were they were really good with it. It's like I was saying earlier. Uh, I I have a very particular design of dragons that I like that I kind of gravitate towards. And I I always used to draw them like. I was telling you guys earlier I used to draw them in high school and junior high over and over and over again like you know a lot of people were drawing like Eddie from Iron Maiden or whatever in their high school notebooks I was drawing dragons that was my thing so for this I love to push this in with inflate but it's a reverse inflate. I'm holding down Alt. Looks like a big tongue. <laughs> Looks like is that you know that creature from uh, uh, Beetlejuice when they 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 try to scare people and they <laughs> they redo their face. So it's just like a a mouth with a big tongue sticking out and weird eyeballs sitting on top. <laughs> That's what I'm making. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna close this and test it. Cause maybe one day I want to animate it and it needs to close. There we go. Then of course this will become the neck back here. I know, dude. I told. 
Eddie. <laughs> Eddie. That's my... Or Van Halen. The Van Halen logo. Or Ozzy. You know, the Ozzy on the notebook. Yeah. You know how old I am. <laughs> so he'll... Eventually he'll get a beard that's like this. Like one of those little Fu Manchu. Not... Or like those little goat, goat beards. I really like those goats that are just have those crazy horns, those weird eyes, and you know, the little beards. Goats. Okay. So then we'll get a whole bunch of teeth kind of going up and down. And I like it to be kind of like a crocodile, where some of them are going up and some of them are going down, and they're crisscrossing each other whenever he closes his mouth. So some on the outside and some on the inside. It, it'll be kind of tough until I actually get down into the details in there. Peachy boy. <laughs> My trapper keeper. <laughs> Remember trapper keepers? You guys are too young for trapper keepers, right? Trapper keepers were like folders. <laughs> yeah, Chris. Trapper keeper. The 80s ones with all the checkers and the hot pink. <laughs> You'd have to take marker to those though. Those were those were kind of hard to draw on. That's right. Okay. So I'm going to pull his snout way in. Like narrower right here. There we go. And that's where we'll that's where we'll have some of the teeth going up where this cross is right here. So we'll be going down right here and up right here and down again over here. That'll be fun. Good times will be had. So much Velcro. Do you guys remember those kangaroo shoes? The king with the little like I don't know if that was just a Utah thing, but had like a little zipper. Like a little pocket on your shoe. Like, what are you gonna, what are you supposed to put in there? Like a quarter? And then you can't get it out? Kangaroo shoes. What's up, 80s? Alright. <laughs> you had a pair. Nice. Okay, let's see. What I don't understand is when you use Z remesher in the beginning to keep nice topology, isn't it useless because you dynamesh after the block out anyway to combine the separate pieces? Yes and no. It's it just it it just helps you move along. You know, it just kind of the if you keep it low and you don't dynamesh, there are a lot of functions that you still get access to like Z modeler, I can go in here and I can pull out one of these faces with Z modeler if I wanted to and still keep dynamic subdivisions turned on. So that's why it's smooth right now is because dynamic subdivision right here. Uh, dynamic subdu is turned on. So if I turn it off, it looks like this. But I could all I could always go in here with the Z modeler and you know, just like Q mesh a poly. I don't know why I'd want to do that. Well, I guess I could, you know, I'll do some horns down here or whatever but you're not going to be able to do that if you're in dynamesh I mean you can you can kind of grab it and pull it out but you don't have that much control you know uh, but yeah dynamesh is is typically for combining and I I don't always combine the entire character together that's something I need to make sure is clear in my course I didn't really cover that as well but you don't necessarily dynamesh your entire character together. You just dynamesh like parts that you want, to, like a, a lower arm to an upper arm where they connect right here. You're not going to want to leave those separated, so you dynamesh them together. And then I, I typically will Z remesh again after that because they're combined. Um, anyway, I hope that makes sense. You had a coal stove, three, <laughs> six in one class. Teacher on the yardstick. What? How old are you, Walter? <laughs> we actually went on a field trip to see one of those 
those old school houses, those one room school houses with the the little wooden desks and the toys they had to play with were like these like hula hoops that you push along with sticks and these Diablo looking things. Man, it was way before the Playstations and the Game Boys. <laughs> it's interesting to see all that. Thanks. Old school school. <laughs> so, okay, I'm going to try something because tonight is the night of experimentation, right? So just as I did with these horns on the back, like this, I'm going to pull those in even further just to get more of a cavity and getting the ge geometry to wrap around even more in there. Okay, so let's see. I'm making, I'm making, I'm ignoring you guys for, sorry. <laughs> let me, let me read, I'm missing stuff. Uh, you still have those dinges. <laughs> Using Z-Remesh this way seems like a nice compromise between blocking out parts from a plan and the kind of exploring playing I enjoy watching in A-Cubes. Exactly, that's exactly it, Dry Otter, exactly. And so I'm going to be doing it a lot more because I love it so much. And I'm about to experiment with the eyelids. I'm going to see if I could actually pull in the cavity to get some, to get Z-Remesher to make a circle and then start to pull those eyelids closed and see if I can get it to Z-Remesh the eyelids into the head and just keep working it until Z-Remesher kind of does what I want it to do. So here we go. We're going to try that. Your partner went to school school in a one-room schoolhouse when he was a kid during the Great Depression. Oh, man. You had dirt floor? The one I saw was, uh, it was hardwood floor. But it was really cool. They still have them in places like Arkansas? <laughs> oh, Blands. I might. <laughs> I might. Uh, I should have one of my kids come over here and sit in this chair and read them to me. I have a hard enough time talking while I'm sculpting, let alone reading all the comments. So I'm going to start adding an edge along this lip, and then we're going to try the eyelid thing. Let's see if it works out. Okay. So let's try this. Actually, I'm going to duplicate this, because remember, kids, that's how you stay safe. <laughs> You, d you duplicate before trying anything crazy. And I'm going to save this too. Uh, let's go to Twitch. And Dragon. Dragon. Block out. A oh, one. Okay. Oh, AK. What did I say? Arkansas? <laughs> Alaska. It's my first day. <laughs> Sorry. Alaska. Alaska. I, I, you know what? I'm not surprised. There are some rural, rural places still in Alaska. So I'm going to try masking this off and really pulling it in with the uh, gizmo. Let's go even more. Okay, so now we have our our socket. I'm going to use inflate to kind of pull it in a little bit. Because I've also learned the closer to like reality you can get something like an eye, an eyelids, and a socket, and how it all kind of fits together, it it naturally just helps you get to the place you want to be, like making something look like real lips because it actually has a cavity than trying to struggle and draw the lips on top of a surface and make them look correct without having a cavity. You know, it just it just helps you get there because it's actually functioning like it really would. So this will be an interesting experiment for sure. Okay, here we go. 
Hey, what's up, Dark? Big fan of your work. Saw a video on YouTube and the Infinity Toys, and our, although I already knew you were a big part of making them, I was totally unaware you did the 3D prints. Yes, and I have something to show you guys soon. Until I saw you during an interview showing off the process for cleaning them up. Yeah, yeah, there is. There's uh, they, they, they filmed us, and I, gosh, sorry, I'm itching. Um, I, there's one uh, of Olaf. I think if you go go to YouTube and do a search for making of Olaf Disney, Disney Infinity, you'll find that video. It was really, really well done. And that's me doing the, the sculpting and the cleaning. So that was pretty fun. Okay, here we go. And thanks for the kind words, by the way, Spartacus. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm gonna, here we go, Z remesh. Okay, let's clean this up and do it again. So you can see that it started to, but it was still pretty lumpy in there. So the algorithm didn't quite, well, it caught what was there, but what, I, what was there was not very clean. So let's clean this up and hit it again and see if we can get it better. <laughs> really? <laughs> Aquarium toy? <laughs> that sounds awesome. Okay, let's hit it again. See, it's just getting better and better. Look at that. Let's let's uh, show the eyeballs and see how good they are. There we go. So now we'll start bringing down the eyelids. And I can actually, you know, come in here and extrude them with the uh, with the Z modeler tool if I wanted to, because now I I pretty much have an eyelid line that I could follow, but I want to be looser than that. I want to just experiment a bit. So I'm pushing this this section in, kind of like a human skull where it, it goes in right here. Okay, so now we're going to try it again, and uh, I'm going to duplicate this one more time just to try it because I kind of like where this is at in case this 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 doesn't work out. Okay, I'm going to use move, and we're just going to pull kind of the the eyelid down around this. And what's cool about this doing it this way too is it's it's not like Dynamesh where it's gonna um, meld together. You know what I mean? Like, if you had a a mouth interior that you made, and if you dyna if the lips were closed and you dynamesh that, that mouth interior is gone. Unless you have your mouth open just slightly, and even then, it still messes up the corners of the mouth a little bit. But with Z remesher, it respects the flow of the surface, and it doesn't meld it together. So it's kind of a cool. It's kind of a cool thing. Now I want to, I kind of want to just Z-remesh it as I go and see how it, it goes because I need some more geometry in here. There we go. Now I want to push it in with the detail brush. I'm just going to kind of start to make that eyelid. I kind of feel like Bob Ross. Start to put the trees in. <laughs> The little trees here. So yeah, it does keep the topology. It, I mean, it it, re, it reworks the topology, but it keeps the surfaces. And another little trick you could do with looks like this is way too far out. Another trick you can do with Z remesher is um, you can use poly groups, and then you can turn on keep groups right here keep groups so say uh, say you have a nice circle happening around this eye you can polygroup that and say keep those keep that group and it will keep it a circle it'll keep it there which is really cool okay so I'm just gonna hit Z remesh and see what it gives me yeah so now it's starting to do not good because it's starting to like walk up the side here. That's not what I want. So I'm going to solo this and just kind of see what I can do to help it along. 
And you can also, uh, <laughs> yeah, the Afro root, root and, and put a squirrel in my pocket, right? This little squirrel. Okay, let's go. You can also mask an area off, like so. And then you can hit, you can hit Control W to put it in a group. But you can see that it's just going to put, it's going to put the faces in a group that are underneath that dynamesh or that that dynamic subdivision, which are the large squares, and that's not what we want. We actually want a higher fidelity in there. And what we can do is I've I've grabbed both sides of this eyelid, the front and the back, and I want to put the whole eyelid in a group to try and maintain some of that loop that's happening around that eyelid. What I can do is I can go to edge loop and hit this edge loop mass border and check out that. So that kind of put the whole eyelid in a group and it put an edge loop around it. Now if I hit keep groups, uh, where is it? Do you remesh your keep groups? It might explode. But there we go. Now it's not walking up the face anymore. It does it does slightly shrink your mesh at this low resolution. So, you know, you kind of need to be careful about doing, you know, Z remeshing a ton of different times. See how it shrunk in and the eyeballs poking out. But so then you just have to come in here and move it again. <laughs> kind of looks like the the dragon on uh, Shrek. <laughs> that it's like, oh, it's a female dragon. Yeah, that one. <laughs> That's funny. So that's kind of cool. So then we can uh, just kind of do the same thing with the lower eyelid, right? And now we actually have a, yeah, the dragon and the donkey. Now we actually have kind of a, a, a loop, like an edge loop that we can do stuff with, like we can pinch it in further. Got to be careful because the eye's underneath there, but just kind of really make it tight against that eyeball and then come back in with inflate, and bring it back out. which will add that eye meat right here. Eye meat. Hey, what's up, Carly? Welcome, you guys. Um, I just wanted to uh, tell you guys I'm doing a webinar next Wednesday, and I'm opening my course for fall enrollment next Wednesday along with the webinar. So let me give you guys a link to that. And <laughs> Ignore the times because I got them wrong, but just know that it's, I'm going to do it at 3 p.m. Uh, mountain time. So if you get your handy dandy time zone calculator out and kind of figure out where you're at compared to mountain time, it's, the, and I'm going to be, if you, if you do sign up for it, I'll be sending out emails and reminders, but actually on that registration page, the times are wrong. They're backwards <laughs> as far as like Pacific and Central because I'm an artist. And I don't do math w well. <laughs> so anyway, if you guys would like to sign up for that webinar, I'd love to uh, see you in there. I'm going to have a questions and answer session. I'm going to do some training like this. It'll be a good time. All right. So let's see if we can do the same thing with the lower lid, but I'm not going to pull it up as high. Let me see. I think I might. Is there a spiral? Yeah, it looks like it might be spiraling. See, uh, sometimes Z Remesher likes to spiral. See that spiral? How it starts here and it spirals out like this? Uh, this is a dragon of my own design. So we're just kind of messing around tonight. I'm going for two hours tonight instead of three. So um, this is just kind of a, 
imagination <laughs> session. I'm just kind of, uh, I, like I was telling these guys, I used to uh, draw dragons in high school all the time. And I decided to try and model one just out of my head, what I used to draw. So that's what we're doing. So welcome to the stream. Okay, let me do that again. I'm just going to pull it out. I was actually thinking about, um, you know, using the Z modeler and extruding the faces out to make that eyelid, the lower eyelid, but it's spiraling. So there's not really a, per a great way to do it. So being an artist, <laughs> yep, head, head units. <laughs> like you, this is how I measure time, <laughs> right? This is kind of tricky because it's bringing, I'm going to have to cut that lower eyelid back down in. But I want him to have that kind of uh, closed looking eye, like that sinister piercing eye look. And if you, if you find yourself uh, pulling some things together, but then you can't quite get them together because the move brush is too big and it won't it won't pull. When you get to that point, you can always use the inflate brush and inflate them together like that. Oh, how did the hippo turn out? Uh, it turned out pretty good. Yeah, smog style, you got it. <laughs> it's funny you bring up smog because that was kind of my challenge for for dragons because a friend of mine at the time was reading Lord of the Rings and the Hobbit specifically the Hobbit and uh, I would I would I would draw dragons and I'm like does this look more like smog and he's like no you know I'd be drawing like Pete's dragon looking things he's like no he's got to be scarier he's got to be more intense you know and I it was like a challenge for me, you know? So I'd draw another one. Does this one, is this one good enough? No, you know? And he's kept kind of pushing me and pushing me until finally I, I kind of uh, made one I was happy with. So that's a fun little story. But that's kind of why I drew dragons so much. I, I, I like them. Just because, you know, as long as you're following anatomy somewhat, you, it's it's fantasy, right? So you're like, you can't have somebody say, that. that's not what a dragon looks like. Yeah, a real dragon. Like the one I rode yesterday. <laughs> oh yeah, multiple crits. For sure. Yep, just like stepping up, stepping up. I had an airbrush teacher too that would, that really, really pushed me to push. I was doing a caricature of Mike, of uh, Mark Twain, sitting on the dock with a riverboat behind him, and it was in. Uh, I was trying to do a fisheye lens, so I was really pushing him. So his head was up in the camera. He had one eye closed, and he had a cigar in his mouth, and he was looking at the camera with his crazy hair everywhere and his body got really really small sitting on this rocking chair on the dock of the Mississippi and uh, the same kind of thing I would take it to my teacher he's like ah push it more push it more push it more so it was like so bizarrely pushed that it was really exciting to look at you know oh yeah and Sumerian like like hiding their hands or something that you didn't want to draw right you're always like just good at drawing it a certain way. <laughs> when you're learning how to draw, you just like kind of rely on your on your constant trick loops, you know? It's like, oh, that looks good. I'm gonna draw that over and over again, look like the same way. <laughs> All right. I used to draw the brows like super low and tight down to the just tucking underneath here. I'll I'll get to that when I have more geometry, but let's see what Z Remesher does to this. Oh, okay. That's 
it is shrinking it massively. So I need to crank it up. We're going to do the dress method. Okay. So I need to hit apply to apply that dynamic subdivision levels first because it was trying to Z remesh the low. So I'm going to try and Z remesh the high. It might take a minute. What? Your grandkids think I was old as a dinosaur. We always joke and say older than dirt. <laughs> Your kids still don't get the idea of one TV channel and in black and white. We used to say, when I was your age, we had to get up to change the channel. <laughs> what? That's crazy. Why would you do that? Look at that. Look at that geometry. That looks so nice. So nice. Look at that. That's super low, not dynameshed pinched eyelid looking awesome I'm not <laughs> sorry I'm not I'm not trying to go yeah you're awesome you look great no I'm trying to say like the technique is is turning out making me happy not like yeah anyway <laughs> yep little brothers or the the hacky sack like <laughs> change the channel had to use a stick with the buttons on it. <laughs> yeah. The historical TV remotes. I remember our first remote, it was literally this big and thick. And it was uh, like, <laughs> it had chrome around the, the, the end of it. And it had six buttons, big fat buttons on it. And then it looked like a shaver, like a big fat shaver. None of the sleek designs they have today. You fix the antenna. Put tin foil on the antenna. Yep. <laughs> you had to aim it just right. Like it was based on sound or something. <laughs> A cable. <laughs> oh man. Did they have remotes that had cables to it? Or are you saying cable TV was your first remote? widen this out. It's a little too beaky. And I love it when it swoops way up, way down. Like this really swoopy. What time you got? Nine o'clock? Okay. Nine o'clock my time. Forty years ago. Your first VCR had a wired remote? I didn't even know that was a thing. Do I remember that? I'm trying to remember that. <laughs> Numbers are too large. Too big. Okay. Now I'm going to show you the, the part of the, my design that I loved. See if I can get it to work. I'm trying to decide if I want to block it out or if I want to just start pulling on this mesh and then Z remeshing it as I go. So it's, it's already integrated or if I want to block it out separate. The, <laughs> the R2 units, they always compared like programming a VCR to like the hardest thing on the planet. Remember that? It's either, it's not rocket science or it's not programming a VCR. <laughs> so the VCRs would just flash 12 o'clock all the time because nobody knew how to change the time. <laughs> oh. Those were the days. We had a, with the gaming consoles, you had a little box in the back 
connected to the UHF with little little screws and you switch from TV to game. <laughs> you guys remember that? Good times. I had a Commodore Commodore 64 you'd have to do that with. along here. Okay. Yep, Commodore 64. And the Atari 2600. Oh, I should get product placement from Pepsi. From uh, uh, Dr. Pepper, I mean. Sp what's up, Spike? Thanks, man. Welcome to the stream. 128k spectrum that used cassettes took over an hour to load a game totally i had one <laughs> you push it and you're like Phew. you had to push play and then type this like load command to load it in oh excuse me jeez membrane keyboards oh man excuse me sorry about that dr pepper jeez Okay, and I want this where the horn is connected to be fatter. Fatter, fatter. Like, uh, you guys remember uh, Tim, is it Tim Curry? as the Minotaur, his big gi gigantic horns, and he walked and they'd like bounce. <laughs> like that. That's what I'm making. There you go. Do it. Make a dragon. You can do it. Okay. So let me, I'm going to block it in first and then maybe we'll try pulling it out with the Z remesher. We're, tonight's experimentation night because we're just having fun. So basically how this works is there's, it, it comes off, this is the kind of the ear kind of, it sort of looks like it mimics the wings. So there's some shape language happening, you know, some kind of uh, like bone, bony segments with skin stretched between them. And it comes off here. Let me see if I can do the Dylan Ekron trick where he draws with the selection tool. So it comes off of here, goes up, and then it comes out like this, and then it comes down. Oh, I ran out. Dang it. You have to draw. Sometimes you have to draw faster. <laughs> okay. So it goes like this, kind of like that, but not round shrink shrink like that but bigger maybe okay frilled yeah like a frilled lizard sort of it kind of comes off the side of his head and then it, there's three of them and then skin between them and the skin's all ragged with holes and stuff in it yeah the you know dragon side fins <laughs> what's up t-chan how's it going Welcome, welcome. And you guys just joining me? I'm sorry I'm pitching this tonight, but I'm doing a webinar next Wednesday. I'm opening up my course for fall enrollment with the webinar. So if you guys are interested, here's the link. And uh, I'd love for you guys to join me. I know the time's are wrong. It's going to be um, 12 o'clock mountain time next Wednesday. That's when it is. And you'll get, you'll get, uh, email reminders when it is. So not to fear. Okay. Let's block this out. Katy Perry dragon. 
Were you high? <laughs> Were you high? Okay, let's see. Bend this guy. Let's pull it out a little longer. <laughs> Jeez. Badoomch. Get that gizmo back. I'm too used to the gizmo now. I needs it. Oh, I want it to go this way. And um, I, I'm always watching and paying attention to the flow. So I want this to come from underneath the eye and then up into the, the ear flappy, right? That's, a, that's, that's what it's called, ear, ear flappy. This is too thick. Yeah, that, that new gizmo is awesome. So cool. All right, let's duplicate this. I think I want them all to curl the same direction, maybe. And this one needs to come out more to clear that horn. Uh, the so the time the the main time is not incorrect, but the time zones that are <laughs> that are around it, I I just inverted the times. I said it's uh, one hour after in Pacific, and then two hour or sorry, one hour less in the Pacific and two hours later in Central and Eastern. But it's backwards, so it's actually uh, 11 a.m. Pacific time, 12 p.m. Mountain time, one central, two o'clock Eastern. So that's what time it'll be next Wednesday. And I'll correct it on the registration page. I just, I was, I just did that la kind of last minute today, and I was putting it together. So, but thank you very much. Do I have a concept of this dragon? Um, not curious. I've, I've just drawn this same dragon a billion times when I was going to high school and junior high. So it's just in my head, like the way I want it to look. So I don't have one, like I, I don't just have one sitting around, but it's in my head. Oh yeah, do you get to see it a day earlier? <laughs> I guess so. Lucky. On the horns for dunk. Is that where he rode? Was up on the top? <laughs> oh man. So wrong. Good job. Good job, DreamWorks. You know, for kids trying to figure that one out. Yeah, I just love that that splaying out of all the horns and the ears and you know just kind of everything coming out in that direction kind of like a I don't know a firework or a bouquet of flowers firework <laughs> gotcha dirt well, how do you say your name 
Dirt Derpeter. <laughs> Charizard. <laughs> there you go. And there'll be some, like I said, some skin webbing between these guys. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. And I'm going to use that trick to kind of uh, blend these together using polish. Or you can do it with Trim Dynamic too, where if you want all this to kind of blend together, you can use Trim Dynamic to push it. I'm going to put a face on this one. Whoop. Too much, too much. And then you just kind of blend across. It's it's a little difficult because of the angle. See, the angle's kind of this valley. You have to experiment with brush sizes. And you can use uh, Alt. And Alt will actually bring the geometry up to the brush. So you can make it look like it's it's all one mesh, even though it's separate meshes. You have to be careful. It takes a, uh, it takes some practice, but it's it's really cool once you get it working. My smooth is too hot. Settle down, smooth. I'm gonna inflate this together. Okay, so the difference between Trim Dynamic, no, it is, it's not the new polish brush, but they are based on the same underlying brush. So they're both based on a polish brush. There's several different polish brushes at different strengths and, you know, what they do. And uh, the Trim Dynamic is just fast. It's like using a mallet to, to pound on your clay. To, to move the surface really quick and polish is more like you know just kind of rubbing the surface and polishing it slower so they both sort of perform the same function it's just a matter of speed so if that if that helps trim, trim dynamic is camera based that's interesting I didn't know that and H polished is normals based so from a from a feeling perspective, the trim dynamic is is quick, and the polish is slow. So I thought trim dynamic was was surface based too. Maybe it's not. I'm gonna have to try it right here. Is it ro it's rolling? Huh. I can't tell if it's rolling around the surface or not. Maybe. That's interesting. Yeah, fast, faster polish brush. So H polish, the, the one that everybody likes, H polish is faster than my polish right here. This this polish is is quite slow because I like I only really use that in subtle circumstances when I actually want to really polish and get it clean. Uh, I find the H polish is way too quick. Plus, H polish will actually, if you push too hard, it will go convex, or concave, sorry. It'll actually go concave into itself. Whereas this, this polish brush right here, it'll stop when it gets flat. So it won't push in after a while, you know. So, and sometimes you want that and sometimes you don't. But all right. Yeah, that's interesting culture. That's interesting to know. Yeah, so um here, I'll just show you really quick. If you I'm going to append a sphere. So let's grab this sphere. And I'll just show you really quick what they do. The sphere is teeny. Okay, so so trim dynamic, it just goes fast like that, fast, fast, fast. See that? Just kind of cuts it right down. And then um, I'm going to show you H polish. 
this one. Age polish is pretty fast. Let's see how it goes concave. See that? Whoops. I mean, you can you can be subtle with it, like this. This is super light, but it's still pretty heavy. It still it still messes with the surface quite a bit. And I mean, I have the in intensity turned up, but I can I can turn it down and be pretty subtle. But if you grab this polish brush, and this is this is um, higher intensity, but I'm going to push pretty hard, and you'll see it does is, does not go concave. It the lighting sort of makes it look concave, but if you look from the side, look at that, straight. Shoo. So it does not go in. Uh, Culture, that's that's a polished brush that I messed with. It's um, it's my custom brush. You can get it if you go to uh, 3D Character Workshop and you can grab this interface and all of these custom brushes that I have. All the ones that don't look like a sphere, like this one, with these custom icons. These are all brushes that I've, I've tweaked and messed with. They, a lot of them started with as other brushes, like, like this, uh, this detail brush is just basically a Damien standard brush, but it's a little smoother. So let's see. So if I choose the Damien Standard brush, let's see, it's very close. But sometimes when you go fast, I don't know if you guys have ever seen it, it looks like a sewing machine sometimes. It'll leave these little tick marks. It looks like they might have cleaned it up. But in, in past uh, versions of ZBrush, when I would use it very quickly, it would leave these little stitch marks. And uh, I went in there and I messed with it a little bit. So that's that's my detail brush. Versus, see they're very very similar now. Um, and then I just have like this pinch brush. This is based off the Ma Cut brush. If you guys have ever used Ma Cut, um, it's it essentially is like a softer version of Ma Cut. And then the cloth brush is just. It's kind of like a smoother version of the standard brush. So you can make cloth with it pretty easy. And then the fill brush is just a very subtle clay buildup without the hard edges that you get with clay buildup. It's just a super smooth. Yeah, like or Orbs version. Yeah, so I used to have a brush on here, the Orbs Cracks which I used to use all the time, but now I use this chisel brush that, uh, yeah, that comes with. I mean, it's a little different, but if you adjust the settings, then you can get it to be super sweet. And now you don't destroy the, the you know, un what's underneath it. It's kind of, uh, it, it's harder to destroy if you save a morph target. I don't know if you guys have seen, you've, you've probably seen that, right? If you store, a, so if I don't store a morph target, and I start again, it kind of gives me this this mess here. Like that. See it's starting again. And if I store a morph target first, and then I do that, and then I start again, it's super clean. See that? And it see when you cross over itself, if I had that morph target turned off, I'll delete it and I go across, it does that garbage. But if you store a morph target before using that brush, you'll get clean continues, which is awesome. <laughs> Knew that last night. Well, dang it. Okay. And then, of course, my um, insert multi-mesh brush, which is just a bunch of primitives that I made that are specific to the, the, the way I build characters. And then, um, then I have this hard paint and soft paint, which is just poly paint stuff basically gives a crisp edge to your poly paint or a, a blurred nice subtle build up like an airbrush so if you want those brushes that's that's where they're at is on uh, 3dcharacterworkshop.com and I want to show you guys something before we get back to making the dragon show you something 
Uh, my buddy Steven Anderson, otherwise known as Smartest, he has been printing stuff for me. I showed you guys Kate last week. Uh, let me see if I can stretch this. He printed out my uh, my pirate girl. So let me make this big. Make it big. Where's my camera? No board. Oh, right there. Hi, I'm big. So check this out. I don't know if you can see it very well. Let's turn up the light. You see that? She's missing her arm because it's printed separately. You can see the key in there and then the key for her scabbard right there. And then you can see like the, the bait thing on her back. And you can see the detail of her armor. Come on, focus camera, focus. Yeah, turned out so awesome. Yeah, form labs. This is printed on form two. Look at that, the hair, the detail in the hair. There you go. There it's focused. Hopefully it doesn't move. Look at her face. You can see her eyes. So cool. He even uh, embossed her tattoos for me. Steven did. Look at the buckles on her shoes. So good. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm excited. So they're printing out a gigantic one, not gigantic, but like a super big one for the Zebra Summit. Form Labs is printing a pirate girl. That's going to be, they said like, I don't know, eight, eight to 12 inches, something like that. It's going to be big. I cannot wait <laughs> to see that. Holy cow. So if you're going to the Zebra Summit, you'll see it live. Yeah, six foot tall. Like, I cannot believe those those Overwatch characters. Did you see those? Those giant... <laughs> oh my goodness. Talk about... Yeah, that's awesome. Okay. What happened to my... Oh. My chat roll is over here being weird. I don't know what's going on. I, I'm missing like, <laughs> what, what happened to the, the upper half of my screen up there? I don't know. Let me see if I can move this a little bit. I'm sharing, oh. <laughs> okay, I'm stupid. Sorry guys. I, I had scrolled down on the web page and the top of the web page was cutting off the thing and I'm like, what is happening? Why is it getting all chopped off? Okay. Anyway, it's just me. My brain's getting chopped off. So uh, before I forget to ask, what is the application you use to see on screen keyboard? Oh, that's called No Board. So it's uh, N-O-H board. And that's just... I use it with, I use XSplit to stream with, stream with instead of OBS. Um, I, it's just a little more stable for me because uh, ZBrush is a very intense program and it takes a lot of CPU and so does streaming and they fight. So XSplit is a little smaller and cleaner based as far as that goes. So when I'm doing larger operations, it tends not to stutter as much. So that's, yeah, that's what I use. So. Okay, let's get back to this. Back to it. I'm going to put a neck in here just because it's driving me crazy. And let's turn it around. Through his head. Okay, 
Let's bend it a little better. I love uh, I love dragon wing designs too, like the symmetry you can get, you know, between the wings coming up and coming out. I I wish I had a picture of it, but I I used to airbrush stuff and paint stuff, and I painted my snowboard. And do you guys remember those books called Dragonlance? Dragonlance books. Uh, what dragon am I sculpting? Just a design of my own. It's not really any particular. I mean, it's influ influenced by a whole bunch of uh, designs, but it's. I'm just kind of riffing, just going off on my own. <laughs> yeah, Dark Grim for sure. It's like, look at that. Astastic sculpt. <laughs> even at. I, I would actually worry about that even at like eight or ten inches. It's gonna look like garbage. Oh, I need to get my Boba Fett down here. That's one, my Boba Fett's stowed away. It's, he is eight inches tall. I, I printed him out at eight inches before. It's like our our last week or two at Disney. We're like, let's use up this resin and print a whole bunch of big figures. So each of us got uh, a, to choose a figure to print and I chose my Boba Fett, so. He's on, I show him on one of my first streams that I did for Pixelogic. He's on there. Yeah, Dragonlance. So the, the writer for Dragonlance actually lives down the street from here. <laughs> Tracy Hickman. Let's see. I'm trying to decide how narrow of a snout I want. Okay, since that uh, since that eye lid turned out so good as far as the Z remesh goes, I'm gonna try the same thing with the no the nostrils. Yeah, Rasslin. Rasslin was my favorite character. Tannis, Cameron. When I was a little kid, I used to like make tea, like thinking I was Rasslin. <laughs> oh, kids. Kids, kids. Yeah, he just lives. He works at the Void, which is a VR experience here now, and he's helping them write stories for them. And his son works there. He and his son. This is pretty fun. Just kind of messing around, trying different things. 3D concept, as it were, as it were. really flare. I don't want to flare him out too much to look like, I don't know, a horse or something, but. The Drizzit books. <laughs> so, yeah, fire breathing horse. <laughs> I actually have a really cool, have you seen those those D&D board games that come in these big thick boxes and they're full of little plastic figures? I have a, I have one that's based on Drizzt, however you say his name, Drist, Drizzt, the elf, the drow elf guy. And that's pretty fun to play and it was, it's really well done, the, the little figures look really nice. So I need to close this up a little bit. Yeah, Chinese dragon does have a horse face. I'm trying to, this guy is kind of based on the English dragons or D&D &D dragons, whatever you want to call it. Do you guys remember Elmore, that artist? Is it Larry Elmore? What's his name? Something Elmore. I used to follow all those artists back in the day. And you, sometimes you can catch them at Comic Cons. Those artists are still around doing stuff. 
that's kind of a cool now it's it's this is kind of what I wanted to try to do was just experiment with some of the scales going down the top and still keeping it low seeing how much kind of detail I can get in here without taking it to Dynamesh Michael Whalen oh for the Pern yeah the Dragon Riders of Pern they're so cool So I just kind of wanted to just work out a design pattern. Just kind of sketch it in. This is just using that uh, the ma, ma cut brush is essentially what it is, which is a pinch brush with some alterations on it. And then come back with the inflate brush and build these back up so they actually look like scales. Smooth them back out, build them up, smooth them out. Raw hide. <laughs> so as much as I like the, the crazy insane detailed dragons that a lot of people do with all those uh, alpha channeled scales and everything on there, um, there's something about just a very clean design dragon, like like uh, kind of like the one on Dragon's Lair, I guess. Um, he's, he's a little different for my taste, um, but just that the clean shapes are pretty cool. Oh yeah, Dark Room, so do I. Your favorite D&D poster had was an Elmore. A necromancer raising some skeletons. Oh yeah. Yep, I remember that exact one. I always liked the, the hunting party that was gathered around the tree with, uh, they had like a dragon in the tree that they just got. It was like a baby dragon, but they're all like proud, you know, they, they just like hunted this dragon it's pretty cool that's one of them and then there's one where they're like trudging through the snow and there's always a uh, different giants and hills and things pretty cool this this pinch is pretty cool because it uh it naturally tend, you know, kind of pushes you towards finding a design. Like as you're working through it and working down, it kind of helps you figure it out, I guess. It's hard because I don't, I don't want to make it look like a turtle, like turtle scales. But this is making me say, hey, I could, if I ever made a turtle, this would be an easy way to do it. It's kind of like quilting, right? You, you just kind of sew around the pattern and then it just naturally poofs up in between the sew, sewing marks. Oh, Dark Sun. Yeah, Brom. I, I was fortunate enough to meet Brom once at uh, San Diego Comic-Con a couple years ago. He is a cool guy. Totally mellow. I haven't seen much work from him lately. I want him to do more. I love his darks, darks and lights with just subtle colors here and there. From Planescape? Oh, Greyhawk. Oh man, do you remember those Greyhawk books? So thick. So much info jammed into there. Greyhawk. So you can uh, with the pinch brush when you get a when you get a spoke like this, a lot of times it doesn't play nice with if you have to if you have to go like a spoke you know like in a, a fork 
So how you can do it is you kind of do like a little pattern. So you kind of cruise over here, 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 kind of like uh, you know around around that spoke to get it to pinch properly, because the pinch brush doesn't play well with others. Meaning if you get too close to another line, it likes to um, pull it the wrong direction. So if you just kind of like do that little quick pattern in there, you can pinch it down in pretty good. I guess it's, again, it's like a sewing machine, you know, going back over it and making sure it's all tight in that spot. Not that I've sewn much, but my mother-in-law's a seamstress. And it's kind of fascinating to watch spell you know I don't know Lord Sloth oh man you guys are killing it Teenage Mutant Ninja Dragon <laughs> yeah like the turtle dragon in a half shell so another thing I like to do with these scales is you, you've heard the saying less is more right so it's good to do, do scales, but not over the entire thing. Sometimes it's better to just hint at them. Like down in this area, I could put, I could put one or two or three, and you just kind of hint at that they're there and they're coming up, but then they're going away again. And I don't know that I have enough geometry here to actually do. Yeah, I might need some more. We'll try it. Elric. Oh, yeah. Yep, that's it. 123,000 right now. Not very high. This is just... I mean, I'm, if I turn dynamic off, this is what it looks like, right? This is a low. I'm keeping it pretty low on purpose. Kind of looks like acne dragon. <laughs> And then you know a couple up on top but what I'm going to do up on top is I'm going to do a couple rows of small horns peeking up in a row <laughs> T Chan here you go here we go T Chan <laughs> oh, I need a rim shot I really do one of those So I'm going to build up where I'm going to put those, those horns. These aren't the horns themselves. These are just like, like the gum pockets, you know, like teeth, how they, there's pockets where your teeth are. These are kind of just building up those pockets to then push back down in to then stick a, a horn inside. Cause if you just stick horns across the surface and they're not integrated very well, it's kind of poor design so you know you need to uh, need to kind of look at and see look at creatures that have horns and teeth and fingernails and see how they're actually integrated into the skin instead of just kind of jamming them all over the place hornnubs.com don't go there it's probably a real thing <laughs> you'll get me in trouble Horn pockets. Oh, Shadow Run. There was a really good. Was it? Sh was it Shadow Run? And I think it was on the Xbox, the very first Xbox, and you could play multiplayer and just run around. It was very Diablo-ish, and I think that was Shadow Run is more like the uh, steampunkish stuff, though, right? I don't think it was Shadow Run. I didn't really play much Shadowrun. I played Neverwinter Nights. That was a pretty good D&D game for what it was. Cyberpunk. Okay, Cyberpunk. The other punk. <laughs> Not Steam, Cyber. 
fantasy cyberpunk. That's, that sounds kind of fun. Okay, let's uh, let's get some horns in here really quick. Whoops, <laughs> drawing one down there. Okay, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Right, that's like back in the day stuff. You always want to look at these from all sides and see how you can make them more interesting. Instead of just putting it in there, bending it, and there you go. Like, I want it to actually like aim down the horns. I want it to have a nice taper. It's, it's a lot more than just putting the things in place, you know? Give a little chaos. Whoa. Yep, good silhouette. So he looks good from this direction, this direction. See how it's kind of like it's just spiraling out from the center like a sun, you know? So it's not just straight. It all has flow and direction, shape language. G Did you say GURPS? <laughs> Pretty. What is GURPS? Is that another game? Yeah, that was that was kind of my in, introduction to PC gaming is missed. So these are looking a little too similar. Very, very similar. So I need to introduce some chaos to these and some different sizes. Maybe one even broken off. Because you don't want to get things very similar sized. You need to make it look like it's. Uh... Hey, what's up, Jimmy? You need to make it look like it's. Whoops, I'm pulling these all over the place. Like, you know, not, you don't want to get it so it's looking too graphic designy, you know? You want it to have some sense of realism. I'm just putting these guys in their own group here. Then I can split them off. Split hidden. There we go. Yep. Friendly dragon. Um, I don't know about... Fr I'd just say stylized. I've always wanted to, you know, just kind of design my own dragon in 3D because I used to draw them all the time in high school so I wanted to take what I used to draw and make make a dragon and I put these random spikes all the way down his neck and then I'll kind of do the same treatment see this treatment on his nose I'll do that same treatment down the front of this neck and leave the top semi smooth with some scales here and there and then I'll do some uh, some more chaotic teeth some up some down and then he's got a uh, kind of a a goat like goat eyes like slits or like cat eyes or something where they're facing for just little tiny slits I like those and dragon eyes so 
And um, you guys, I'm uh, I'm doing a webinar next Wednesday. So those of you just joining me, if you, I'm also opening up my course for fall enrollment next Wednesday as well. So I'll have a webinar to talk about it, and I'll do some free training and some tips and tricks and stuff like that. And the timing on that page, the 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 Pacific Eastern and Central Time, they're backwards. So so because I, I can't do math very well. <laughs> but it's it's at 12 o'clock mountain time that's when I'm doing it next Wednesday so it'll be 11 a.m. Pacific 1 a.m. or 1 p.m. excuse me central and 2 p.m. Eastern a snooty dragon like Sean Connery I played a dragon in my last movie <laughs> Fantasy Dinosaurs. <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Welcome to Fantasy Dinosaurs. A huge Santa cloak? Uh, okay. For your best friend. So, you know who does some of the most fantastic stylized fur that I've seen personally is... Uh, is Bryce. So let me, he's got a longer name, so let me make sure I get the name right. Bryce Laville St. Martin. And I'm probably killing the, he's, he's French, so I'm probably killing the way you pronounce it. But if you look, if you look up Bryce on ArtStation, he does these grayscale characters and he does some stylized hair but it's not like it's not like little little wispy hair it's like chunky really cool stylized hair and uh, I would recommend checking out his techniques for some inspiration well thanks Angel yeah <laughs> Sean Connery did do the voice of the original Dragon. <laughs> I. <laughs> that's why I like doing that. I played a dragon in my last movie. I am the last dragon. <laughs> there you go. Opening his mouth a bit. I like. Uh, I like when the dragons have that, like that webbing, like a snake when they open their mouth. Uh, it kind of has that webbing going across right here. Pretty cool. I'm going to try something here. It's like Happy Dragon. <laughs> oh, you found it. Thanks, Waltron. Yep, he does. He So, yeah, Bryce and I have, have, have talked about character blockouts and stuff like that, and he made a really cool one. He took it a little farther than I like to take it, and... Um, and just a just a warning as far as like the reason I don't give away my blockouts for the most part is because uh, I don't want to be influenced or I don't want you to be influenced by a, a blockout because blockouts really don't take that long. I mean, if if I wasn't streaming and talking about it, I can do a blockout in like an hour, you know. So, uh, and I don't want to be influenced by shapes of block that's why I'd block out a new character every single time because I don't want to be influenced by what's what's already been done you know there we go I kind of want to overlap this lower jaw just a bit something about is bugging gotta fix it then I like to do I don't know if the snake hooks gonna work on this lower resolution mesh but I like to pull out stuff like this to continue this kind of pattern going up there. Let's get smaller. Yeah, 
yeah, something like that. And then to kind of work the throat into the turn on topological into the the neck, so it doesn't just go brrr and stop and then continue, you know. Let's see. Uh, was it the McConaughey Dragon movie where the dragons had the the little pilot lights in their mouth to ignite? Get yes. Oh man. I don't know about that one. Jimmy, let's see. You just saw my last Twitch session yesterday. It looked very nice with the facial shapes. Thanks. If you or anybody else are interested in facial blend shapes, I would suggest a book by Brian Tyndall. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The Art of the Moving Points. That is a very good book. Very good book. I have seen that. Would snake hook brush be good for making eyelashes? Um, it depends on the kind of eyelashes you're making. Um, I I tend to, uh, yeah, you're right, Harry. Um, I I tend to not build eyelashes that way because it's a little too loose and unpredictable. So, and it, it depends on the the look of the eyelash you're going for. Um, there are some really cool insert multi-mesh eyelash brushes that you can drag the lashes across the surface. I haven't really used those too much, but that's an option. What I usually do is I will take, like, I'll make a temporary shape, like a curved shape or something, and I'll physically draw the topology of those eyelashes on that shape and then give it some thickness because then you can already build that curl in to the lash so you're not like you know messing with it and like trying to make those lashes behave um, another way to do it is just like I did these right here these these kind of ear boons whatever you want to call them um, and you can like manually stretch out a sphere for each eyelash and you can really control it that way but it's probably too high of resolution for that small of an area um, but if it's just kind of, I, I tend to just do what I did on the pirate girl, which is just, just a, pretty much a, just a slab, like a, like a wedge that goes around the eye and gets thicker as it goes out because that prints the best. I like to print my stuff, as you can see, and those little tiny little curly eyelashes, they'll just be gone. They won't print at all. So I typically tend to stay away from those. So anyway, um. And you guys, I'm only streaming for two hours today because I've, I've had a crazy, crazy week and uh, I'm, I'm launching my course again next week. So uh, I'm uh, so I'm just super busy and I'm trying to get that all wrapped up. It's it's pretty crazy. So anyway, I think, um, yeah, do you guys have any questions about this process at all? I wonder. I want it to kind of curve to match that, but I want it straight at the same time. So I might make the bottom straight. We'll see. But it's, then it starts to look like an alligator. Oh, hey, NLT, how's it going? Y'all sneaking around? <laughs> yeah, thanks for spending your evening with me again. I feel like Bob Ross. Thank you for welcoming me into your home. <laughs> and once again, I'm, I'm doing the webinar next Wednesday. And I'm also opening my course for enrollment next Wednesday. And here's the link to register. And I'll just send you some reminder emails. You'll get an email from uh, GoToWebinar and you'll also get an email from me um, and, and uh, further on down the line. So anyway, I'll, I'll I'll probably keep working on this the next stream. I, I really like where this is going. So uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll finish them and you know build them out and do do an Ashley type stream and do a monster for once. <laughs> so anyway, thank you Pixelogic for having me. Uh, if my workshop at the Zebra Summit did sell out, so if any of you guys signed up for that, I thank you very very much. I can't wait. It's going to be exciting and. Um, I'm also sponsoring the event 
I will have some t-shirts there like this one. I want to bring some t-shirts so if you're there at the event uh, you might just uh, sport a t-shirt or score a t-shirt I guess. <laughs> so I don't know if you'd want to wear one or not. They kind of turned out a little dark but um, I like them. So uh, anyway, um, what else was I going to say? Um, I showed you the print. Did anybody not see the print? So, and I want to do, I got to show you guys this. So I've been working on the, the logic of the emails for this webinar and I've had a bit of help, but I want to show you this. It's crazy. It's like it, because I have to keep track of when people sign up and how close to the day of the webinar they signed up and it's just crazy. Okay. Let me show you. It's, it's, I like it because it's very visual workflow get it down here okay so look at this is uh, it just fascinates me so sorry if this is boring but when when somebody signs up then they get tagged and a timestamp put on them and it's based on when the webinar is going to happen and it just kind of goes down the line and then it's like these decisions these if then statements it's like if they're signed up then go here and if they if they do sign up then go here and there's all of these things and it just kind of goes through like a coin sorter you know like it sorts kind of people out into when they're going to get these emails based on when they sign up for the webinar anyway it's just it's just crazy stuff for me <laughs> so i thought i'd show you guys it's, yeah it's crazy anyway um the so yes you would you'll still you'll still get access to a private Facebook group that I have going and it's that private Facebook group the private Facebook group is awesome there's people in there that are just killing it and uh, they're very very nice offer lots of help and um, they're just pumping out some really cool stuff I'm actually thinking about possibly doing a discord um, I don't know how many of you guys have messed with discord but as soon as discord gets video so because I really like to do uh, student feedback through Facebook Live and I can push a Facebook Live video just like this to my group only so only the group sees it and I'll have my students occasionally send me a model like that they're working on I'll see it and I'll be like hey let me let me check that out I can probably help you get it more appealing and they'll send it to me and then I'll do a, a little video where I take their model and I work with it a bit and I say you can do this you can do that um, and then I will record it and I'll put it up in the course for the entire all the students to watch if they didn't catch it live but I was thinking about doing the uh, a discord because you can you can separate things into different channels so you can say like ZBrush help or Maya help or you know different different help channels and if you want critiques or if you just want to show off your work you know that kind of stuff it's it's nice to have different channels whereas in the Facebook group it's just kind of one solid stream just you know and I like to do like uh, uh, inspirational models like of other people that I see that the students may not have seen like Bryce just posted one a couple weeks ago and I made sure that my students saw that and I also I'm trying to get some interviews I have some interviews coming up I'm going to interview with Bryce and I'll put that in the course it's going to be really cool so anyway if you're interested just check it out next Wednesday and I'll be there for all your live Q&A answers and I'll t explain all, all about it and what it is. So anyway, thanks guys. Thanks for sticking around. Uh, sorry, I have to cut this short tonight. I, I might do two hour sessions. The three hour kind of drags on into the night and my kids are trying to sleep. And so I might, I might do two hours from now on. We'll see. We'll see. Anyway, but thanks everybody. You've, you're always a fantastic audience and keep me laughing. So I will see you guys next week on Tuesday at the same time. So um, if not, I'll see you next Wednesday during the webinar. So thanks, guys. Have a good night.